Last January I went into the hospital with a fractured spine and several other injuries. No surgery was required, but I had to lie in one position for a month, barely moving. It was painful to breathe because my ribs were broken and my lungs were bruised. It was even more painful to move my legs. Every awkward movement hurt my spine. The painkillers saved me, but the composition of the drug was frightening. They said it was an algin with dimidrol, and who knows what else. And the dependence on this substance was terrible. There was an elderly man lying next to me, and when they stopped giving him painkillers, he was writhing in pain. He had a compound fracture in his left leg, and the pain was radiating to his head. This grandfather was the only one who was discharged from the ward alive while I was there. Within a month, six other people were admitted to my ward, but they all died. One of them had multiple stab wounds on admission, so his death was natural. But the men with hernias and fractures died of unknown causes. Naturally, no one told me the cause of death, and that scared me. This elderly man said that at night someone walks here as if in heels. Not stomping, but tapping, and sometimes you could hear the rumble of a gurney. You can't imagine how I felt when the corpses were taken out of my room in the morning. Then I learned from the cleaning lady that before me people had died here like flies, and in general, people spoke very badly about this ward. A week after I went into the hospital, I got the idea to give up painkillers so that I wouldn't become dependent on them in the future. The first two or three days were fine. As long as I didn't move, the pain didn't bother me too much. Then the pain started to plague me at night, so I mostly slept during the day. And that's when it all started. In the night, I heard footsteps. Quiet, slow and rustling. They were heading toward the room. Holding my breath, I looked at the door and felt the sharp pain again. It was because I was lying with my head against the door, so I turned my head, and that made me feel the pain. The footsteps were getting closer, and the closer they got, the scarier I got. But then the door opened and the nurse on duty came in to check that everyone was asleep. I breathed a sigh of relief. I was used to sleeping at night after taking my medication, so I didn't know she was making her nightly rounds. I calmed down and continued lying down. Then I heard footsteps again and the rumble of a cart. I thought a sick person had been brought in and I fell asleep. In the morning I found that no new patients had been admitted during the night. Night came again, again the footsteps and again the nurse on duty. When she came, I had to close my eyes and pretend to be asleep, or she would immediately give me a shot of sedatives that would give me a headache. And then there was the rumble of the gurney. There were three people in the room at that moment, and one bed was empty so that another patient could be put in. The gurney rumbled closer and closer, and then I got really scared. Through the rumble of the gurney, I heard the click of heels. I would have run if I could. The gurney rumbled and the heels clacked. And then it went quiet. Suddenly the door opened and the gurney rolled into the room. I closed my eyes and pretended to be asleep. But the gurney stopped between my bunk and the one next to it. It rolled closer to me, and I felt someone's breath on my face. Something touched my arm, and I flinched weakly. You're awake. The voice spoke in a whisper, but it seemed to be made up of many voices and sounds, including screams of terror and sobs. I know. What had touched my arm now touched my shoulder and then my face. I pretended to be asleep to the last. And perhaps it had saved my life. The bed across the hall creaked. My neighbor must have woken up. Hey, who are you? 
That was all he had time to say. Something on heels moved toward him, then there was the sound of a body falling, and a couple minutes later the gurney was rolled out of the room. I think I passed out from nervous shock. In the morning the neighbor was found dead, and I moved to another room. But at night I still heard the sound of the gurney, about twice a week. It would pass by my room, and each time I would freeze, begging it not to come.